show with Paul Daner, Mark Salafo. Kick off the weekend, all right? It's the Growler Friday show. It's Who Day Life. All right, welcome into the latest edition of Who Day Light. Paul Daner Jr., Mark Shalafu here with you. What is going on? I'm feeling good. I'm in a nice cold basement, which is exactly where I want to be this time of year. Um, I feel like I was in an oven yesterday for about three hours. Uh, I'm glad that you made it out. I, I, not yeah, everybody not did. Everyone. We lost some good men that day. Uh, it was up. Uh, it was people were dropping like flies. It was just sweat. Jay's shirt changed color after like 15 minutes. It was just a <laughs> pure, clear. Those that didn't that made poor decisions in in what they wore were exposed immediately. Just sweat discolorations, and it's just awful. It was. It's one of those one of those days where like this is. Oh yeah, this is what training camp is like. I haven't really dreaded camp to this point and then yesterday you're like oh my god this is what it's going to be for like three more weeks at what point during a practice like that do you start thinking like do i have to be out here could i just pop back (laughs) over for the press conference like how important is it for me to watch every rep here no there's definitely you start thinking where could i bake in an off day you know it's just (laughs) is kind of the first thought yeah no there's a lot of questions you're asking and it's just hard like because it's, so there's there's just no coverage out there. There's there's nothing over the the bleachers. There's there's no tents anywhere. There's you know there's like one mister over above where the food is served, and then one above where you can buy gear, and like the entrance where the people that are working there are. But outside of that, it's just you're out there, man. And you are just baking, and there's no way around it. And it's funny, like how quickly the bleachers clear out during these practices because people are just like, God damn, like I can't do this. Um, and just are like, that's enough. Because when it's when it's smoking like that, it's just it's hard. It's it's hard to to deal with it. I got down there Wednesday and it was hot. I thought Wednesday was gonna be like the hot one, and I was able to post up on the bleachers because we got a little bit of a breeze. So that was a nice play from that. But even a few fans went down. The heat was too much. There were some fans that helped to the medical tent and in front of that giant mister. Um, so you know, I'm glad that you weren't uh one of those, like a media member down. How humiliating that would have been for the podcast if you passed out on the sideline from the heat. I wouldn't because I've got my chair, right? Stools. <laughs> The stools are coming through uh, for me right now. Love, what no, flag I'm, is flying today? Oh, USA Team USA, of course. Team USA for the Olympics. Okay. Yeah, the Olympic Olympic rings with the Team USA uh, on top of that. So everybody, make sure we know. I mean, it would be very basic to be flying the American flag. People don't even know what part of America you're you're, you're rooting for at this point, or if you're even an Olympics fan. So I wanted people to know that I'm, <laughs> I'm, I love the Olympics and I'm here supporting Team USA. So got that that one. It, it's nice to get a good 16 day run of the Olympic flag to fill the summer space. I like that. Yeah, you really get to lock in during the flag dead period and like, hey, yeah. this is covered for me now. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we do we have we do have a lot to get to. And, and early practice today, Luke Combs concerts have practice moved moved up. So um, we're going to have a, the afternoon show. Then they're off on Saturday and then um, Sunday they will be back practicing out at the fields. Of course, we're almost to the opener, the preseason opener, which is going to include apparently the starters playing. But it's going to be the kickoff of our live show season, which we are stoked about uh, down at. You you remember from when we did the draft show, same spot. We love it down there. The venue is just awesome at BetMGM, Nation at the Banks. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to be doing $3 Cincy Light, $6 Queen City Nacho Trays. We have many, many ridiculous ideas that we plan on trying <laughs> out and things that we're going to give away and make it a fun party that you guys are going to want to come to and get some stuff when you come down there. Uh, I, it's going to be our exclusive home for Grower Live shows all season. We're going to have a bunch of these, but on the, the both home preseason games, which is this one on Saturday, and then also on uh, the, the 22nd, that Thursday, the Colts game. We'll, we'll be doing them four hours before kickoff. So you can start off your afternoon or your evening in that in whichever case uh, with us when you come down there to go start your big day at the game. Yeah, it's going to be a fun hang. That's what we're going for here. If anybody that was at the draft show knows, like that was just a fun time to hang out. 
Um, you know, it, it's going to be an exciting game, especially if the starters get in. You want to go see Joe Burrow throw again against another team. But yeah, it started off with us. It's going to be weird. We're going to have some fun stuff. We're going to have some fun guests. And, um, you know, these first two preseason shows, especially, that's when we're going to maybe kick up the weirdness a little bit. Yeah. Try some stuff out. You yeah. know, we see, push the limits of, of seeing what we can do and people will tolerate. And we're going to have some giveaways. We'll have all the requisite stuff that make going to a live show fun. But uh, we're definitely going to definitely going to ramp it up a little bit for the preseason because then we get a few games off because you're not doing the 1 p.m. games. Right. Like nobody wants to go to a a 9 a.m. show. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, definitely make sure put it on the calendar for the first preseason game. Come on down there and um, we'll be hanging out. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. We need to to make sure that everything is absolutely in tip top shape for the Monday night football live show what we do before Monday night football against commanders because Natasha B is coming in from Hawaii for her first home game. I mean, yeah, you can't mess that up podcast royalty. So excited to, that Natasha, Natasha B is coming in. And so we gotta, we gotta make sure that everything is right. Uh, by the time we get to that part, because okay, one big guest announcement, Natasha yeah. B. For the Natasha third B. Show. Absolutely. Can't wait for that. Uh, so yeah, make sure you come down there and uh, check that out. Uh, before the preseason opener against Tampa Bay. Um, all right, favorite story of the week. Where are you at, Mark? What do you? Uh, what do you? I mean, you were down there this week. You got to have camp observations, right? I know. I've got some camp observations. I think um, one of my biggest favorite stories are uh, the post camp shows that you and Jay are doing for the YouTube. You know, I did wow. want to plug those before we jumped in, but that's a, that's yeah. a big one for people to check out on, on the YouTube page for the Growl Pals. People are loving those keep uh, checking those out after every practice and uh, you know, leaving good reviews, all that kind of stuff. And so my thing is I was watching some of those shows and you hear some of these things and you need drama, you need storylines, you need interest. That's going to carry you through the preseason. I mean, a lot of Bengals fans, we know what this team is going to look like. Largely. We know who the key players are. We, we kind of know what to expect, but you got to have some different storylines for the camp. Oh, maybe this guy's going to be big. Hey, keep an eye on this guy you've never heard of. And they flame out whatever. But then when you see some of these things you guys are talking about in person, Amarius Mims being a giant human that moves really well. And then you get down to that practice field. And you're like, dang, this guy is a specimen. He He's like kicking ass down there. He's looking great. That's a big one. Um, yeah. I just kind of assume that Jermaine Burton, because he is such a talented guy, would be just a lock to be on the field as much as possible, along with T, along with Jamar Chase. And we talk about the other receivers. You know, Charlie Jones has made some good catches, and he did the day that I was there. You know, Yoshi, oh, he's the best receiver that's out there. And I just kind of dismissed that a little bit, just kind of assuming like, yeah, yeah, this is a camp narrative, a camp storyline. Yoshi was good. The guy was making plays up and down the field. And I was like, okay, wow, he could, he could be, he could really have this breakout season. I know Joe Burrow said it in his press conference, like he's expecting big things for him. And so that was exciting to watch. There's still always a little bit of that, um, you know, concern if it's like, hey, these receivers are cooking today. And in the back of your head, it's like, oh, or are the cornerbacks suffering a little bit here? Are they not uh, fully locked in? Could this be the issue that we thought that it might be? Um, And again, that's something that we'll get a better handle on when we have those joint practices and preseason games, et cetera. But um, yeah, those were good to see. It was good to see so many fans down there. Also, I I got there too early because we uh, I went to I've only been down there one other time. It was on a weekend last year. So, of course, the crowds were huge weekday crowds. Not so bad. You know, you still want to get down there early enough so you can get a decent spot. Um, and so you're usually waiting a while too. This was fun. You're waiting a while to get in at least a half hour, 45 minutes for most people. So people are throwing a football around just out on the street, having a good time, not a lot of traffic. And, um, there was like one dad out there with all the kids running around getting just soaked, just super sweaty. And then somebody from the team had to like come out and yell at everybody to get out of the street. I feel like that's a tough L to take as a dad when it's a bunch of little kids and a grown man in his 40s getting yelled at by another adult to stop playing football on the street. So he's had to sit down all dejectedly. Um, But it it, it was a good experience. It's a fun experience. Everybody should go down there if you can. Um, Especially, it's it's free. You can just pop in, and it's nice to watch everybody up close, and you get to see a different side of the team than you would when you buy your ticket and you sit, you know, way high up in the stadium. And um, so, so it's a fun thing. 
I do think that, uh, yeah, and people should get down there just to check you out on your stool, make sure that you're doing okay, get, make sure yeah, that you've sure. got your water and stuff so you can get through yeah. uh, camp. And I got to see Jamar Chase in his hat. That was big. Got to see the yeah. hat. Did you like? Did you like his hat choice? He went no hat yesterday, which was which was interesting. Hottest day of camp, no hat. Maybe Very he's surprising. just progressing. That's just he's yeah. progressing, progressing to getting a helmet on. You can't put a helmet on if you're still wearing a hat. So now he's getting closer to being back out there on the field with the fellas. You know, I don't know. Yeah. It's it's tough for me too to just. I'm trying to like look at the Jamar Chase situation, and I do feel like we need to be more concerned about it than we are because we do have a few more weeks of preseason drama that we need to cook up for yeah. for the various shows. <laughs> you kind of know both sides of this story. You kind of know where it starts, where it ends. Um, so it's tough to be worried about it. But at the same time, it's like, wow, we've got some preseason coverage. we got to fill up some some drama somewhere. So yeah. hat watch, well, day eight. Hat, you know? hat watch, yeah. What What's he going to go with today? Well, and, you know, I, I really appreciated the the locker room. Uh, the new locker room reveal and that Chase's locker seeing that he had his hat in the helmet spot. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, <laughs> this is wear what you're putting on your head. But also, you know, we, we did get Burrow yesterday saying, look, hey, I went through this last year and I've offered some advice on negotiations and and essentially how this all goes and things that I learned. And I only need a couple practices. Give me an individual period with Jamar and I'm good. Which seemed to suggest, I'm telling him you can go ahead and push it all the way to the week of the regular season. Just make sure you get a couple practices in with me. And we'll be ready to roll. Which isn't exactly what you want to hear. But um, yeah, know. that's not great. Especially because it just <laughs> reminds me of last year. Without Joe Burrow only needs one practice to come back from a calf injury. He'll be fine. And it seemed yes. like a little bit more than that, but Browns um, 24 Bengals three, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also, you know, T saying like T had a great practice from all accounts yesterday, the day I was there, he, he didn't really flash a whole lot, Yeah. but I saw that he was talking about how he had to get his legs back under him. He didn't do OTAs. And so, you know, he started to feel like himself again. So it took him more than one practice to get his legs back and to get his feel for the game back and really start standing out like he can. So, Hopefully Jamar gets more than than one uh, one session in before he gets rolling. Yeah, and and maybe they do get something done. I don't know. We'll we'll see where all that stuff goes. But for now, um, it does not appear the end is near uh, with the Jamar chase. But we will continue to monitor the hat situation and keep track of that for you. We had, um, you know, we had Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson are going to be out for a few more weeks, and obviously without Chase in there. You know, for me, uh, this is what camp is about, though. Like, I don't want to see Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson and Jamar Chase in camp. I know fans maybe do, but for from a from a coaches or a developing the team personnel point of view, I mean, watching everybody else is really what this is critical time of year. You know, getting to see Miles Murphy, getting to see Andre Yoshivash and Charlie Jones more, getting to see Burrow you know, cook up connection with those guys and seeing where these younger players are fitting in better is way more advantageous than it is. So yeah. Do you want to see Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard hurt? No, but I think getting a ton more looks at Joseph Osai and Miles Murphy and getting them more reps is going to be really big. And the same with Trent Brown out and getting Mims in, you know, this is this stuff is just is just critical. And so I, I think this has actually been, you know, an underrated story this week is, yeah, we're going to spend everyone's going to spend all this time talking about everybody that's out. But this is a, such a great time to evaluate the guys that are in. And that's what this time of year is really about. Anyway, it's not about the stars. This is about the rest of the roster. And, you know, they're getting a good evaluation of, of guys now. And and you're learning a lot. I mean. Joe Burrow out here saying a plus about Amarius Mims about the way that he's done everything and and really liking what he's seeing. He sounds it, it just feels like he's going to be the starter on opening day. It just feels that way right now, you know. And granted, I, we haven't seen Trent Brown at all, but I think you know when it comes to trust, Burrow putting his trust and and his word behind Mims, which he would say nice things about anybody. Like he's going to 
build that guy up. This was over the top, even by Burrow standards. And so I think that type of stuff is, is, is huge. And, and for him to go out there and a guy who was raw and didn't have a ton of reps to be getting those um, is, is an underrated story this week. I kind of would have liked to see him get some of those reps though, against a Trey Hendrickson or Sam Hubbard or some of those top guys. But you're right. It is good for him to get those reps at least and kind of get that feel. And I think both those guys are going to be important. You know, Trent Brown is going to be have a pretty key role on this team. Yeah. I, I can't bank on the offensive line staying as healthy as they did last year because uh, history would indicate that's not always the case. So yeah. he's going to have a, a pretty big role to play at some point in the season. So you want both those guys as ramped up as they can be. Trent Brown, obviously being a, a longtime vet, he knows how to to play the game and do what he needs to do. So it is nice <laughs> to see Mims to, to kind of get going and, and get rolling here a little bit. But are you, is there any concern with the Hendrickson and Hubbard stuff? Cause I did not know those were week to week injuries when they yeah, were out. I, I thought it was like, Oh, this is not a big deal. They'll be back in a few days. Now it's week to week. And I'll, it seemed a little bit more stark than I thought it was. I think that's the case that not that it was more stark, but um, that why push it? There's okay. just there's there's no reason to push these guys to come back. And that's sort of I, I asked Zach Taylor about that yesterday, specifically just saying, look, are they is this a precautionary timeline? Like if it was a regular season, how different would this be? And and his point was, yeah, I mean, it'd be a much different timeline if we were talking about the regular season. But now there's just no reason. There, there's no reason to push those guys back. Let's give the young guys more reps. Let those guys get fully 100 percent healed and make sure it's all good. You know, it's the same conversation that was had around Burrow last year. And and that was, you know, you got to make sure he gets all the way back. Because if you don't, what do you get? What happened is what you get. You get the setbacks. You get it goes on into the season. And now you're like, OK, now it's a real problem. Just make sure whatever it is, it is unequivocally 100 percent before you bring those guys back, because it won't be a problem getting them going once they get ramped up you know give give them a week or two of practice or apparently just two practices uh and and they're good to go and you're rotating those guys early in the season a little bit more anyway in regular season games so if you're trying to get their conditioning up that's kind of part of the process you're they're not going to be out there playing 95 percent of the snaps week one you're gonna have them down probably in that 70 60 range just by the nature of early season football so um I, I think that it's it's more than okay to switch it up to week to week. I don't I don't think that there's any I I don't get the impression that there's any real concern there. Okay, that's good. That reassures me because like I, the week to week thing kind of threw me off a little bit. I was like, all right, well I, you know, they say they're going to be ready for the start of the season and there's no real concern. But also, if there was real concern, they would probably still say there's no real concern at this point. That that's a fact. That's and, a fact. But I I actually believe it to be true at this point. That's good. Good. Uh, which is which is absolutely good. So, you know what else is good? You know what else is good? Oh our yeah, guy. I do want to know. I want to you know. You want to know? Good. Yeah. Our guy, your guy, everyone's guy, our friend, Eric Stanyo from Team Stanyo. What's going on, buddy? Hey guys, how you doing? We are doing awesome. Great to have you on. Of course, I mean, I, I do we have to keep doing the introduction? Yeah. Like I feel like you look, you guys know he's <laughs> our know guy. It. He's the Grow Pals real estate agent. He's got the number one real estate YouTube channel in Cincinnati at Team Stanyo, S Z T A N Y O. Anything you want to know about where to live, what's going on, market trends, everything about buying, selling in Cincinnati is all over there. You always cranking out content. Make sure you're going and checking them out. How are we doing? Doing great. Just real quick, want to say thank you for having me on here as a normie Bengals fan and you know, fan of you and your content for years. This has just been a blast. And I want to say thank you to all the growl pals out there who I'm sure this summer wanted nothing more when they tune into their Bengals podcast to hear a local real estate agent hawking his wares. You know, that that's what everyone wants to hear, you know, when they're talking about the Bengals, right? So but yeah, we're good. Um, big stuff. Do you have a question for? Do you have a question for me this week? Here's a, here's a question. Oh, by the way, yeah. real quick. Sorry, I know you're. Yeah, go ahead. Stanio household. Big news. Just want to get this out there. Yeah. Dumpster delivered today for the demo on the edition. Wow. In the edition, one hundred percent urinal is drawn in. And wow. So, yes. Ar architect. What a, what a what a move. What a move. On. I mean, look, it's your house. You do what you want. Okay, 
I'm going to be keeping you at a distance, I guess. Yeah, I, I think the know. architect. I don't know if I'm going to come the, visit. Am I even allowed? Oh, or you're is allowed. going to be judgment because you're going to know what I'm thinking the whole you time. You can have the it, first. You, know? you can have the first run at it. You know, like we could have the a ceremonial a ribbon, first a ribbon run. Ceremony. No, I don't, I'm uncomfortable with that. <laughs> He'll take I'm your picture afterwards. First, He'll hang it next to the run. urinal. Yeah, I think uh, my architect and interior designer are, are on Team Daner. They kind of looked at me sideways when I was like, we have to have the urinal. Okay, um, <laughs> question <laughs> Yeah. Question for the week. All right, this one's, we're all excited about camp, a healthy burrow, Mims doing what he does best and being a gigantic human being. Everything's looking good. We're focused on the season. But um, my question, Paul, I wanted to zoom out a little bit and be forward thinking and as a Bengals fan think about the future and and vision of this what would you say um you know is if you're if we're thinking like three years ahead from now not just this season what would you say are is the state of the franchise in three years how does it look differently than where we're at right now man I you know what's funny is what we were just talking about and some of these younger players that are getting run is going to go a long way to determining the state of the franchise. The biggest key in terms of where the Bengals are at in three years is if they are getting star drafting stars at premium positions opposite Jamar and Joe. We know that those guys are going to make all the money, they're going to soak up a ton of the cap. No matter how high the cap goes up, they're still big numbers. You just have to find stars on cheap rookie deals in order to offset that, or else you're in trouble. Because if if Miles Murphy doesn't work out, um, they are going to either have to use another first-round pick on an edge rusher or a pass rusher, or go pay one. And if, if you haven't seen what's happening in free agency trying to get premier pre pass rushers, you're just not going to get one. It's going to go the way of Christian Wilkins. It's, I mean, these guys, don't they don't even hit the market. And so you have to get them. And when they took that swing at somebody like Miles Murphy, that is a direct offset. The same thing with, you know, you hope Cam Taylor Britt continues to be a number one corner that you have for a couple more years and you get him extended and you build around him. But, you know, DJ Turner... Uh, these guys at premium positions, corner, edge rusher, receiver, you know, Burton becoming a guy, all of that stuff to offset the cost is going to go a long way to determine the state of the franchise. They're in a good place. Like they're mm -hmm. going to be relevant and able to win the Super Bowl every year because they'll have Burrow and Chase. But what puts them over the top is really we've got the draft classes have to start hitting again. And, yep. and so that to me is going to determine that. And, and that's why this camp is huge. And, and this, so many of these years for these young guys, we, we, we go through all these names and we're talking about so many, I'm like, God, there's so many day one, early day two, you know, day two, early day three picks that haven't seen the field a ton yet, or haven't really had a true chance to prove themselves and that we're going to learn about this year. And, right. So we're going to know so much more after this season uh, because if they get that, if they get one of these draft classes, a couple back to back to hit, you, you become the premier team in football because you have the, you have the quarterback. Team. It's such so a, I think it, they're in a good spot. It, yeah. It's weird to be in this luxury position where you're like, maybe the first round pick will play this year, you know? Yeah. Uh, and whereas in years past, it's like, God, get that guy in there, please. Maybe he can save us, you know? So yes. It's just an interesting cycle as a Bengals fan to be on this part of the, you know, the cycle, I guess. The floor, the bottom line is the floor is you're a Super Bowl contender in yeah. week one every year. And you're, you're on the list. And, and that is, is really all you can ask for. The rest tends to be luck, drafting, which drafting is a lot of luck, making a few shrewd moves, a couple of good free agent, value free agent signings, and you can be on your way and just hope it comes together. But you're, you know, to be on the list every year. And maybe you get, maybe you get a Yoshivas every once in a while who. Yeah. Up and like, are huge. Look at that guy. I mean, go back, go back to 11 through 15. I mean, Marvin Jones was a fifth round pick and he has a great career. Muhammad Sanu is a third round pick. He has a great career. They're great. Number two and number three receivers on, on when you have AJ green, uh, you can have somebody like Marvin Jones who can be yep. really good for a long period of time. 
playing opposite of him. And, and that's exactly what you could get in somebody like a Yoshivash or Charlie Jones. You know, they, that could be your next Marvin Jones uh, and Muhammad Sanu here potentially down, down the line. And, but you got to, or a Burton, it's all got to, got to figure right. itself out. So right. that's, that's part of it. Got to draft. Well, that's, that's the NFL in a nutshell. All right. No, I love it. I want to remind everybody to join the Stan, yo clan, yo subscribe to his YouTube channel over at team Stan, yo. And uh, look, when, Housing affordability is being stretched to your limits. You need a trusted guide who can answer any, all your real estate questions. Eric's your guy. He's our guy. He's a growl pal. That's all that matters. So if you or someone you know is looking to buy or sell, you can email directly info at teamstanyo.com or go to www.teamstanyo.com to connect. All right. One more thing. Guys, pause yes. the podcast right now. The fact that Paul doesn't have more YouTube subscribers than me is crazy. Go subscribe yeah. to that YouTube channel. He's bringing you great content over there. Yes. Thank you. That's what I need. Yes. Cross promotion. Love it. Yes. Thank you, brother. All right, we'll see you. See you. We got to get uh, Stanyo to take the pat down there for Jamar Chase. Yeah. Down to practice Ooh, what if know? Jamar starts wearing different promotional hats? Like we could, we could, we could get that. Let's. Let's yeah, get, that'd be fun. What a hat is he hat? wearing today? Get a growler hat for him to wear, maybe? Yeah, it'd be fun if he just like changes it up. Even during the practice, it's like, oh, wow, he's got the growler hat on. Now he's got a Stanyo hat. Oh, whoa, now he's wearing a Graders hat? Like, he just keeps mixing it up. <laughs> All with our I people, love... though. <laughs> Only oh, by the way, our community. Speaking, you know what? Speaking of Graders, we, we have to give props. Before we get into the questions, you guys sent a ton of questions. we got a bunch to get to. I, I, we we got to give props. To, uh, he's listed as James Homer. I don't know if his name's really James Homer or not. At Graybeard eighty nine on Twitter, he was traveling the French Riviera and did a reenactment of the Joe Burrow playing chess photo at the same spot, and with like the guy watching and and the deep in thought with the backpack playing playing chess i was incredibly impressed and he pointed out is this a graders worthy effort for a growl pal that finds himself in the french riviera yes absolutely i i i mean i i am incredibly impressed uh to be thinking about the growler podcast while you're in france and and, and taking it to this level of putting the photos side by side. Shout out to you, James. DM me, send me your information. We're we're sending you. We're sending you the graders. Graders worthy, baby. That is it. That deserves a big thank you for for the for what you've brought into our lives. Yeah, that is just next level commitment to recreate the pick. I like to think that he even organized the trip to the French Riviera with this podcast in mind. He he set out to go get the graders. Yeah, you could have just bought graders locally, but he's like, what if I earn it? What can I do to earn it? Let's travel internationally and recreate the Joe Burrow chess picture. That's dedication, and that's what you expect out of a growl pal. And so I'm impressed as well. Yeah, shout out to James. Anybody else that wants to travel the world and do anything podcast related, just let us know. It could end up being graders worthy as well, and you could get all the delicious graders showing up on dry ice on your doorstep as well. So Take a growler anyway. flag, plant it around different parts oh. of the world. Raising Anybody that wants growler countries. flags, all we, we need to make that happen too. Go over to, go over to Flags USA. Get you a growler flag. That maybe that becomes their new bestseller. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, it just overtakes everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you ready? For all some right, we questions got questions, we'll right? Cool. We got some questions that people we need to get through. I, I know we've got them. We'll knock some out here. The first one, uh, run passer boot. This is from our guy Stan. Good growl, pal. Run passer yep. boot. Uh, the last we're talking the last three first round draft picks here. So assuming the entire roster stays healthy this year, everybody's healthy. Which of the last three first round picks balling out this year is the most important to this year's success? Okay. Well, you know, I just kind of touched on this with Stanio a little bit about Murphy being a huge deal, but look, there's never a bigger deal than protecting nine. And that tackle is also a premium position and the most important thing on this team. And so having Amarius Mims immediately becoming a dude, um, when you consider his ceiling is really doesn't have one. The ceiling's the roof to quote Michael Jordan, right? I mean, it's, it's, there isn't any, 
I mean, he's he's just so athletically gifted. If he turns out to start living up to that potential immediately and balls out, as this says, that is the best case scenario and the best for their success. And keeping Burrow upright is what matters most. So I'm going, I'd be going with Mims. And you get the most years of him on cost control. So that would be number one. Murphy would be two. Dax would be three. Not that it isn't important for Dax Hill to find himself a home, um, but he is, you know, getting a little later into his contract. And, you know, you've got DJ Turner there as well. I just, I just feel like they need Murphy to, to be a guy more than they need Dax specifically to be a guy. Um, it'd be great. All of that would be great. But if I'm ranking them, it's Mims, Murphy, and I'm booting Dax. Yeah, I feel like that's the way to go. And only because of this question, the caveat of that, the health being there. You know, otherwise I might swap a few of those guys. But uh, if everyone's healthy, then we are talking like you're not worried about the floor. It's the ceiling. And the ceiling for Mims, not there. Then, yeah, you want that's going to be the most important to see what this guy can do. And then Miles Murphy giving some extra pass rush juice. That's a little bit more important than, um, you know, having that third corner because DJ Turner has looked really strong. Cam Taylor Britt, we know what he can do. So if those guys are both healthy, then uh, Dax Hill, maybe it's not quite as urgent as some of those other positions for him to, yeah. to really ball out. Our next question. Oh, I like this one. This is from Dale. This is talking tight ends. And uh, that's not a position we, we get a, a whole lot of conversation about. But with Eric all coming back into the mix, how do you see this crowded tight end room shaking out? Tanner Hudson's still out there making catches. Kasicki's obviously got his role cemented. And uh, Drew Sample's going to play a big role in this. But, I mean, there's a lot of dudes here. How, how's this playing out in your mind? Yeah, it, it's a great question. Um, because I don't know that we totally know. I mean, I, I think Tanner McLaughlin would be the low man on the totem pole um, as a, as a six-round pick. Um, you know, Tanner Hudson, he just makes plays. Burrow likes him there. He had success last year. He's kind of Gesicki light. Um, and so I, I like him as a direct backup, um, for Mike Gesicki. If something were to happen to him, having Tanner Hudson, there's a nice luxury. I mean, you could go out there now, Gesicki and Hudson, neither of them are giving you much as blockers, but they're better than a receiver as a blocker. They'll give you a little bit maybe. And if you could go out, you could go out there in 12 personnel with two tight ends and flex out to five wide and it feel like you have five receivers. And so that's a fun versatility to have, like in, and have there's matchups somewhere that you can win. Um, samples going nowhere. They love what he brings as far as in the, as a blocker, they use him in the backfield now, like he's going nowhere. So you end up, I just don't see them cutting Tanner Hudson. It's possible. I just don't see it. They're not going to cut Eric all. Um, so if you, you know what this happens though, you go through camp, all of a sudden somebody gets a ding and they're out for however many weeks and they go on IR to return. And then somebody else gets hurt midway through the season. And you, you, you say, Oh man, I'm glad we had this many. You just find a way to keep them all in the building. So uh, McLaughlin's probably the easiest to get onto your practice squad. So that's more than likely what they're trying to do um, unless an injury happens in camp with somebody, which, again, it's always possible. It takes one day, and all of a sudden this conversation goes away. But for now, there's five. I think you just see where it's at at the end of the month. But the, if they all were there and healthy and available, you're trying to see if you can get McLaughlin onto the practice squad. And you probably could depending on how he looks in preseason. I feel like a lot of people just assume that all would still be recovering for a while. And that kind of makes this conversation a lot easier. And, um, you know, seeing him out there yeah. catching passes, that was encouraging. I think maybe yeah. even he was a little surprised with, uh, how fast his recovery is gone, but, um, yeah, it would be really intriguing to see what he can do once he's fully healthy too in that mix. Yeah. And he's back in the mix now. So you're not going to get the carry through on right. UP situation. So, um, you know, he's, I think they expect him to potentially be a guy and he, man, he made a hell of a first impression, uh, on, on, I guess, Wednesday. Next question is a super bowl hypothetical and we love big hypotheticals here. Let's, let's, hypo let's get hypothetical. So this is from Brian. Uh, if the Bengals win the super bowl this year, 
Do our chances of signing Chase and Higgins to deals to keep both here get any better? Or are there any chance that uh, they would lower their price tags to stay and chase another ring? Absolutely not. <laughs> I can't. There, There's no one, first of all, is lowering their price tags. And certainly not T. Higgins, who has been, in his opinion, and rightfully so, treated the way he's been treated. Um, ain't lowering anything for anybody in this building if he's a free agent. I'll tell you that right now. So... Yeah, if they win, that that's the ideal scenario. T. Higgins will never be more valuable hitting free agency uh, than he would be if he comes off of them making a Super Bowl run, and he would more than likely have been a big part of that. Jamar Chase's tag ain't coming down if they win the Super Bowl. After teams, it, it's always a mess after a team wins the Super Bowl because everybody deserves to get paid because everybody played a role in it. There's so many success stories, and the team wants to keep the band together, and you can't pay ever. It gets so much harder. And in this case, uh, I you know, there's no, it doesn't change anything. It actually makes it a lot harder. Um, both tags go up, not down uh, on Chase and Higgins. So, yeah, that would be that'd be the hypothetical. But don't worry about that because who cares? Enjoy the parade and keep having parades if the team wins. That's that's why you do it. It's why you do all of it is to maybe one day get the first parade in the 50 plus year history of the franchise. Like. That's what it's about. Get the parade, man, one day. And so if they can get that, then people can go wherever they want to go at that point. I know you're trying to keep it together and win multiple rings, but in that I mean, case, that's not necessarily what this is about. It might be. I like the, the question because it is such a fan question. Would these guys lower their prices, keep the band together because they just want to start a dynasty? Uh, yeah. yeah, that sort of thing's not going to happen. But I mean, it, ha it does happen. Look, Travis Kelsey... You know, we, we've seen things like that in Kansas City where we, there's, I do not unequivocally do not see that happening here and certainly not with T. Yeah, it's not a common thing. I would love it. I would love it, though. If you win one Super Bowl, sure, then pay both those guys. Give them everything they want and then just coast off that Super Bowl for a few years. No one can be mad at that. Let Burrow yeah. just chuck it and try and score 40 a game for the rest of his career with his two star receivers and. The defense will be a mess, but you kind of know that going in. You'll get some high action games, and uh, no matter what happens, you can just coast off that. No, My there's, an part ab there's an absolute runway of it, 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 it's up for debate three to five years after you win a title. And I would put it on the five side since this will be the first one. No one's really allowed to kind of complain about anything. It's like people talked about this after the Rams and kind of after the Bucks. Um, won the Super Bowl because they had both had to kind of dismantle and blow it up afterwards because they went all in and got it. It's like, yeah, but their fans aren't complaining. They're still just replaying highlights of the parade. You know, there's oh look, there's drunk Brady again. There he is. You know, throwing the they're throwing the trophy off the boat. Isn't I that what a great day that was? Let's not talk about the fact that they just traded everyone away and have nothing but young guys. It doesn't matter. Like you. You can you can let it ride for a little while. I'm not saying that would happen, but you know. You, yeah, you I do. That. Right, the Bucks fans definitely got to enjoy that. I don't know about the Rams fans because I'm not. I don't know any that there Rams are fans. any. Yes, exactly. I don't think that there are <laughs> Rams fans, so they probably don't care as much. But uh, good question, nonetheless. Love thinking about the Super Bowl hypothetical, Brian. So he also wants to. Uh, he he added this. He loves the show, and he wants to get you a bleached buzz cut wig. I mean, we had the AI Paul hair, you know, like yeah. the, or earlier in the off season, and that looked cool. That was something I was like, man, you look at that and then you really see the potential. I don't think the bleached buzz, bleached buzz cut wig is the move for you, though. That's not uh, I don't think that helps the podcast at all. Whereas like you with the great long hair like that would oh. be something that, that would really elevate this show. Give what i would give to have the the ai long hair now that that i would do but yeah no i don't i don't need that i don't need the buzz cut i just rather i'd rather own my baldness yeah um and i just like the idea of a buzz cut wig it's not going to look good at all but it would be no. funny for you to wear um so we've got a lot of flag talk on this show and this all started when we had the flag runner that uh sent us a, a question a couple months back and that led us off on the original flag tangent on this show well he's back the flag runner returns. He's got a, a Luke Combs question. Um, so he wants to know, like, you know, he because Luke Combs apparently is famous for bringing out local athletes to shotgun a beer with him. 
So he he wants to know which Bengals most likely to make an appearance if you had to run pass or boot Ted Karras, Sam Hubbard, or Logan Wilson going out on that stage and shotgunning a beer. Uh, Ted Karras, that's not close. Yeah, that's the yeah. easiest. Question, I mean, right? Teddy K. First of all, Teddy K is basically the damn mayor of Cincinnati. I mean, everybody loves him, and he would love to shotgun a beer. Now, I don't, I don't know if he is specifically a Luke Combs fan, but I'm gonna guess it. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, <laughs> T- Teddy K. He, before, before you went through the multiple choice on that one, I already had Karis in my head as the most obvious answer. Maybe a couple of offensive line boys, a couple of good old boys, maybe Cordell, Cordell and Teddy K and and Alex Kappa. Uh all okay, some, yeah. some country some country boys all going out out there together to to try. I have no maybe all five of them. I mean, maybe, maybe just get Orlando and Amarius out there with them too, and everybody's shotgunning. I have no idea, but there's no question that Teddy K is the ring leader. And that would be thing. fun to bring them all out. Yeah. Bring the yeah. whole offensive line as like a team building exercise. Also, yeah. I don't think it matters if Ted is a fan of Luke Combs. Maybe he's just a fan of shotgunning beers in front of yeah. stadiums full of people. Like that's a pretty yeah. cold stone cold Steve Austin moment, you know, like everyone. A lot of pressure on that. You there know, is. if you've ever, you ever, if you're not like, if you haven't done one of those and it's been a while, like since college, you're like, wait, I used a key once and that worked. And then you're like, am I, how am I going to do that? You don't, you got to really, you got to practice shotgunning some beers, which can put you in a troublesome spot when it gets time to actually have to go do the one on stage. Too many dress rehearsals is an issue at this point. Uh, but I, although I fe- have a feeling Teddy K could probably shotgun a, more than a few beers and be just fine. Yeah, I, I'm guessing he's not somebody that needs a training camp to get ready to shotgun a beer, you know? <laughs> I don't think he he needs that one indie period to get ready to shotgun. I think he could be pretty good just uh, off the street with a beer. That's just my guess. But we'll see. We'll see if any of it comes to fruition this weekend. Um, next well, question. Flag talk. Always appreciate flag questions. Yeah, our flag runner. And uh, I do remember, like, it's a dangerous gig. He said somebody, like, tore his shoulder last year running out with the flag and stuff. So flags are a serious business. Yes. Um, next question is from Matt. He was listening to Zach Taylor's press conference on Monday. Couldn't help but notice the use of his words several while discussing the amount of weeks the, pun- the punting competition would go on. And um, so so this guy is basically wants to know, was Zach referencing the infamous uh, something something from Survivor 46 with the Jelinski. use of the word several? OK, what now? Yes, I, I'm not so, a huge Survivor nerd because, well, you know, you should it, be. first of all, well, it's a great show. It was a great show when it started. It is I, it, you what do you hey, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to do this here. But I mean, when's the last time you watched an episode of Survivor? I mean, probably 15 years ago when it was exactly still a relevant the show, show has gotten so good lately, but you wouldn't know because you haven't watched. It has changed itself. It's become like the ultimate chess match upon I mean, it's it's it is so intricate and interesting. And they have they've done such a great job of casting. I, I'm just going to say it is not what it used to be. It's like a completely different show. And it's great. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna go down. I'm not. I'm not. I don't judge people on their TV choices. I'm just gonna say let's. We don't need to take shots at Survivor. That said, the answer to this <laughs> question. I love the idea that Zach Taylor is such a Survivor fan, though, that he would like have a random drop from C- episode one of season forty six, dropping the word "several" in, which was a, a joke that went on, and it did carry on through that entire season. That this is that was a uh, a recall, a callback, if you will, to last camp and the Joe Burrow injury, which he termed several weeks was how long he would be out as the perfect general term that nobody really can agree fully on how long several is. We all <laughs> tried to come up with our version of what, but it's a it's the perfectly vague number to use. It feels like something, but it could be anything. And so he was very proud. He's very proud of that. And uh, so he dropped it back in. I happened to laugh at it because it was an excellent callback. And I think he was just happy that somebody laughed at it. I think he kind of views it as a little bit of his uh, comedy workshop. It's like his joke gym. Yeah. A little bit up there that you guys like to do. He likes yeah. to he likes to try out some material every once in a while. He likes to feel like he can tell some jokes up there. So he was trying. He, I think he was just appreciated that he got a laugh on that one, um, which which happened at a press conference this week. It was pretty it was pretty funny. 
Yeah, it was a good callback to last season. It was not a deep cut to Survivor. A little nod for all the Survivor <laughs> I wish fans. Um, when is know, the next uh, joke gym? By the way, well, I want to get down to one of those. Um, next joke gym will be Tuesday? August sixth, uh, but I have a show that day, so I won't be there. But um, be Josh there. would be there, and um, I, I'm getting somebody. Uh, Anthony Devito, Devito is covering for me. Who is uh, he? He's been on Comedy Central late night with. Uh, Colbert or whatever like he's got some good credit so that's still a good show go check that out and then I'm going to be at uh, Cafe Alma that Tuesday that local okay. show clean show you could bring your grandma oh, that's the Cafe that Alma show. show yeah with the yeah. delicious Mediterranean you, food you've Love eaten it. there before so that uh, that's going to be an interesting one <laughs> we'll see how that one goes I might make my daughter uh, come up on stage since it's an all ages thing so she can uh, see what it's like up there get her Zach Taylor moment and yeah. um, work on her jokes I do have an ambush question for you. Do you want an ambush question? All right. Oh, wow. Gonna, All right. You, you liked Me going too. international for the graders worthy. So we're going to go international again with this okay. question. Uh, we're going to get, we're going to get a little political here. So oh, I hope you're okay talking oh, about, uh, you know, national international politics here. Iran <laughs> has apparently raised the red flag of revenge for only the sixth time in their history after the assassination of one of those uh, people over there. So this guy wants to know, do you have a special flag to let neighbors know when you're mad? You know, don't pick up after your dog. It's time to raise the flag. Like, do you have a, a red flag of revenge like Iran? Oh, my God. I need one. I, I, I hadn't even thought about the revenge flag. This was this is going to be the most productive ambush like question ever. I absolutely need a revenge flag to let everybody know I'm out for vengeance right now against somebody in the neighborhood. That's perfect. Imagine I the don't. terror among your neighbors. Oh. They see that flag going like, who is it? What happened? No, oh, no. Everybody keep your guard up. Paul is on the war path. But I only do it like once every couple of years. Like, and it's just like, what happened? Right? Like, what is going on? Who is he out for vengeance against? What's he plotting? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is, is your biggest grievance that you've got with your neighbors? Like, well, what, have, what, what do you even call it? <laughs> I love my neighbors in my neighborhood. I don't have any uh, any grievances. Are they the grievances are, are part. Is that why you're saying that? Just look, you can look. tell us the truth. The truth is, we do get a lot of home renovations in our neighborhood. A lot of houses get flipped back here because it was an older neighborhood, but it's a good neighborhood. So you get like a lot. Of, everybody's trying to get their value up. Too early or too late people working on people's houses like 7 a.m is Ugh. too early to be putting on a new roof okay like that now i get it's it's the company shows up like whatever but i i get a little irritated by that or you know as when i'm trying to put kids down like it, you can't be still doing the roof project at at 8 39 o'clock at night like there's the middle of the day is when these things need to be done and super early and, and much later are have to be off the table. That's my only grievance. And that's not even at the people. It's usually just when you're getting work done, this is kind of the stuff that happens. I mean, I think that should be a warning. So if you're somebody that works on roofs and you're out there 7 a.m., you're doing your job, you're like, all right, we're getting an early start to this project, knock this roof out today. And you slowly see that red flag of revenge rising at your house. That is the, the warning. Just get off that roof, get in your truck and get out of that neighborhood. That's really critical, too, is the slow raise, I think. But I don't I don't have like so I don't have the pole that you you know, standing that you got to use the pulley system to get it up. Although I, I, I do have dreams of that, of having one of those one day. But I think what I would do is I would go out to the front of my driveway and just wave it in like just anger, right? <laughs> just big, heavy waves just to let everybody know that, that lately I've been dressing for revenge. Maybe you could hire a flag runner, you know, get one of these guys that they're not working a Sunday. They don't need to carry the Bengals flag so they can come Ooh. and sprint Ooh. around your neighborhood. Ooh. You know, your red flag of revenge. You know, it. look, if someone would be will, someone had experience in that realm and would be willing to do such a thing, uh, that feels like something I'd be willing to pay for. <laughs> like, look, is, just get how, what is an hour's worth of running around a neighborhood with a revenge flag worth? I don't know. Priceless. Yeah. I think Actually, an hour is a little much. I think you could get the message across with 10 minutes. You know, no, it's going to get you. The person collapse. gets so tired. It becomes a, everyone has to come out and tend to him. Why was he out here? Then everybody knows. 
Oh yeah, he's yeah. running the revenge flag. Paul's he has to stop at the this. lemonade stand to chat up the little kids and <laughs> get rehydrated so he's not passing out on your sidewalk. Oh, I love it. All right, good ambush light. Good ambush light this week. I appreciate that. Remember, everybody, send in your questions uh, to the Growler Podcast at gmail.com. Anything that you want me to answer, uh, put it something in the header ambush if you want me to not know what it is and I won't open it, so I don't know what's coming. Uh, but yeah, send them to the Growler Podcast at gmail.com. Keep those coming. If you see stuff from our training camp reports on YouTube that you want us to expound more on or just a topic that you're like, man, despite this insane amount of content being dumped into the feeds, I feel like I still haven't heard about this. Just keep firing those away. We'll try to get to as many as we can as camp goes on and the season goes on and everything else. Send those questions. And keep doing all the normal stuff, growl pals, leaving good reviews, sharing the show, keep building the show as we're still in our first year here. At, hit like, uh, hit like yeah. every time you watch it too. That's big. We need that. Yeah. Leave a fun comment. That's good for the algorithm. Say something nice about whatever, you know, Paul and Jay are wearing that day. That'll help uh, boost that up <laughs> in people's feeds. So people see those more and uh, yeah, keep, keep sharing the show. And most importantly, come out and hang out uh, at the first live show on august yeah. 10th we need to put up a schedule probably of all of our live shows we are going to we are it's going not to every put week, up the schedule so. here very soon okay, so everybody can know but the next one's the 10th the 22nd we'll do our kickoff show that we've done every year before this year it will be down at bed mgm nation uh and that's all the beat writers previewing the season leading up to the kickoff of the thursday night game that's on uh, the 5th, September 5th. Uh, we've, we've done that a number of years in a row now. It's going to be down there. It's going to be awesome. We'll have all those same deals and everything, giveaways, everything that we normally do. And we'll have all of us down there previewing the season and talking about stuff and hanging out afterwards and watching, uh, I guess, Ravens Chiefs this year is the kickoff game. So we'll be hanging out watching that and talking to people that want to hang out. And so it's going to be a big fun time. People that have come to that in the past know how great it is. We're really looking forward to that. And uh, the Growl Pal pledge from my end still uh, continues. If uh, there, if I'm coming to a city near you, you want to come out to a show, just shoot me an email, shoot me a DM on social media. We'll get you on the guest list. Uh, I had a few reach, a few Growl Pals reach out from Atlanta, so we're gonna meet up with them when I get down there. I'm there October fourth through six with friend of the show Josh Sneed. I'm coming to uh, where else am I coming? I'm going to Michigan, Wisconsin, and Virginia later this fall, and uh, Vegas in September. So I'll be around and I've got a, a local show for you local growl pals. I just added just for you guys, October 19th at dead low brewing. So um, definitely come out to a show, come hang out, come to our live show. If you're local, you know, come out to uh bed MGM nation. It, uh, and, and if you do come out to a standup show, I forgot to add this one. I'll be at, at hilarities in Cleveland on Sunday with Dave Waite. that I just added that pretty late, but if you live up in Cleveland, you can come out to that. Um, and I did have, so I had a joke that went viral from my last special about um, how to inspire my daughter to play soccer better, you know, and it involved the dog. It's good. You can go and find that on my social media. But as a, a parent of, um, you know, young athletes yourself, I wanted to run this theory by you that somebody left uh, as a comment. But first off, are your kids, are they fall sports kids or are you guys just spring yeah. sports? Okay. Well, so no, they, yeah, we have, we have fall sports too. What yeah, are they playing in the fall? Soccer, Ooh, soccer. Um, okay, good. soccer, soccer for the youngest. And uh, we we're, 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 we're just focusing on dance in the fall right now for, for my oldest. We used to try to do some other sports, but they've fallen by the wayside. Yeah, it, it can be tough when they go a direction that uh, is maybe not the most fun to watch as a parent. Like I've got a gymnastics daughter who's going heavier and heavier down that path. And She's such a good athlete. I'm like, come on, what about basketball? Maybe that could be your thing or, or doing something where you're not just in a gym for hours at a meet watching your kid compete for 10 seconds. Tough, tough week for you trying to sell that. I know <laughs> it's terrible timing. We are at like the but, peak. But of dad, her. look at this. These people are American heroes. and Maybe the most beloved Americans that we have in our country right now. And you're telling me not to do this. Yeah, it's so hard when, you know, the Olympics being such a big deal right at the right age where she's at the peak for how expensive gymnastics gymnastics is before she kind of like falls into the other things. And yeah, it's tough to be like, hey, this isn't a big deal when everybody's involved and watching and locked in. There are football people that are raising Olympic flags at their house just in support of the game. <laughs> so, yeah, you can't escape that. 
But I did have somebody leave a comment on the soccer joke about uh, they took their six-year-old was playing soccer, right, for the first time. The kid lost the first game, and immediately after losing the first game, the mom took that six-year-old to get his flu shot. She's like, this is what happens to losers and got his flu shot. Like that is, and then he went undefeated for the rest of the season. Like he became a dominant (laughs) soccer player. That is hardcore soccer momming right there. I like it. Because what if your kid stinks? It's soccer. And it's like, all right, well, here's your seventh flu shot shot of the fall. a lot of shots. There's just nothing in. It's just the syringe just gets longer and longer, even though there's nothing in it. You just keep poking them. Just a comically large shot. All right. Well, hopefully (laughs) you'll take practice more seriously. I do that. Um, I have, I have, uh, I do have one dad life ooh, okay. uh, to drop in, and it, it's it's related to this, and that is, you know, we we're a big, in case you couldn't tell, we're a big Olympics family, uh, so we like to, we don't watch a ton of TV in the house, but we've kind of been letting the kids stay up later, watch more of the Olympics in the primetime coverage, which is better because. You know, it's it, there's it's tighter. You don't get the long like, look, I don't need to sit for five minutes and wait for the scores to come up or watch warm ups like everything's nicely condensed. It's it's easy. Snoop Dogg does a montage. They love Snoopy <laughs> Dogg. who's like the most universal Snoopy Dogg. They call him Snoopy Dogg. I'm like, th- th- nobody crosses over better than Snoop. I mean, it's unbelievable. But so you have the olympics going on but one thing that my youngest daughter for whatever reason learned about the great wall of china um you know and really got fixated on this great wall and then became i root for china now and so when china when china is on it's like oh they say oh where are they from they're from china he's like yay i love china we're like no we root for the united states okay where we root for the usa and she's like go china i love china (laughs) we had to get into like okay well here's a few reasons why maybe we would object to the way china treats people right or or just there are general feelings about them as a as a country why maybe we like our country a little bit better it takes you to some kind of dark places that was supposed to be more of a fun experiment here watching the olympics together like can we just root for us and but still every time china comes on from the other side of the couch you'll hear "Ooh, china and it's like (laughs) oh it's like but they have the great wall i'm like i know we don't have a wall we're well aware okay so we have to like it's just I, I it's taken us to a lot of uncomfortable places. Yeah, you guys are getting a little political. Like, all right, fine, we yeah. need to build that wall just so <laughs> she's not so big on China. Um, that, that that also like the Olympics too feels like one of those times you should be able to force your sports allegiance on your kids. You know, it's one thing. Oh, they're not going to be into this team, whatever. I grew up rooting for the Bears, but they like the Packers, whatever. Like even rivalries like that, you see that sometimes, and you got to deal with it. Or your kids randomly a Dallas Cowboys fan because they're just a huge bandwagon fan, and they grew up in the '90s. Whatever, you deal with that stuff. But if you're jumping on the China bandwagon in the middle of the Olympics, you got to put a stop to that. You got to just have have every American hero you can just come by the house and really kind of nip this in the bud. Yeah, you don't want this China thing to grow. Yeah, no, absolutely. Or you know. Maybe we just at bedtime at night just tell stories about all the worst things that somebody from China has done. You know, <laughs> just the horrors history. of China. The horrors of China to this week, Wednesday night on the horrors of China. So we're gonna yeah, give you anyway. nightmares until you root for USA. Yes. So that's uh but love the Olympics. It's been it's been fun to watch it every night and uh and uh you know chant you get to chant USA, which is what what is better than that. Um all right. That'll wrap us up. Uh, we've got, make sure again, make sure you're going over to the YouTube channel. Jay and I are doing these about 10 minutes, little camp recaps every day. We do take away a play and a thing they say, cause it rhymes and kind of just give you a brief recap of what happens. So you feel like, you know, what's happening down all of these practices. We post those on the YouTube channel right after we get back from the locker room. Uh, every after every two though we're putting them up on the feed which you probably have seen so know that you'll you'll get those uh we'll have one show up tomorrow um on saturday from the last two practices so we're, we're getting those in the feed for you but if you want to get them now you want emergent you want to see our faces see if we're still sweating uh <laughs> you can you can check us out make sure you're checking our youtube channel go over there like subscribe all the things get your notifications so you know when they show up that's a great idea uh all right well we'll be back we'll be back next week more who day light more training camp if you see us down there at camp 
collar. Maybe bring me a cold towel and a water. Appreciate that too. And, <laughs> Gotta get uh, you to August tenth. Man, we gotta keep you we'll see right. you down there at the live show. We're pumped for that. Make your plans to get down there. We have lots of fun stuff playing. So we'll talk to you later. Have a good one, everybody.